All right, Alan. So I just have a quick question, I guess. Let's start with your transition on from, you know, where you came from to now being the showrunner at Med. How familiar were you with Med and just One Chicago in general before you took this role? Um, I was not that familiar. I mean, I was I was aware of the shows for sure, and I knew they all aired on the same night, but I I really hadn't watched more than the uh Chicago Fire pilot. And I mm-hmm. watched that when they made the pilot because I, like every television writer in town here, uh, had a meeting on the first season of Chicago Fire. Um, you know, so uh, th- that was my only exposure to it. But since then, since I've gotten this job, I have become very much uh, educated in in the you know one Chicago world and specifically in Chicago Med. You know, there's a hundred. There were 176 episodes made before I got here. And I've had to watch them all. And so I I feel well educated. <laughs> that was gonna be my next question. What's and, have you gone yeah. back and watched all nine seasons? But that ain't that makes sense. So no, I, I have and I you know, I I I watched season nine first mm-hmm. and then I went back to the beginning. And because gotcha. I wanted to see where we were jumping off from, you know, yeah. from first and foremost. But um, you know, I I Obviously, clearly, I became a fan, and I just loved being immersed in that world and getting to know uh, the original, a lot of the original characters, uh, most of whom aren't on the show anymore. Um, you know, uh, but the transitions to the new cast were were so gradual that it just always feels very robust and organic and uh, dramatic. Yeah. Well, speaking of where we left off, so at the end of season nine, we leave off with Ripley walking out of the hospital when he's been accused of beating Pavel. Is there a time jump or do we pick up or, you know, or is there a time jump or do we pick up right where we left off? Um, We time jump a month forward. So we do not do a direct pickup of that scene at the end. Um, And the opener, uh, the season opener, which I wrote, uh, it's called Sink or Swim, does not um immediately delve into those questions you know because uh th- there's a mass casualty event that happens mm-hmm. leadership capsizes near navy pier and there's a lot of injuries and traumas from that so those are all brought to gaffney and everyone has to throw themselves into that what i wanted to do is jump forward a month and then catch everybody up gradually as we went through the episode but i can tell you that um in the intervening month uh, that there has been a chill in the relationship between Ripley and Hannah. And that the reason for that is that he has not been transparent about that night, what his involvement was with Pavel's attack, if any involvement at all. Um, And she told him off camera that I'm not cool with this. If you can't be honest with me, this is over. So they are kind of on a break and, uh, you know, by the end of the first episode, we will find out what what really happened to Pavel and Ripley's involvement, or no one or Ripley's involvement in it, or perhaps that he wasn't involved at all. Gotcha. So we find out basically by the end what really happened, even though yeah, it's not like episode. immediately where we pick up. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. And obviously that incident hope puts Dr. Charles in this weird spot because Liliana believes that Ripley did it, but like Dr. Charles isn't really sure. So like, how is he going to navigate his love life with Liliana and obviously his relationship with Ripley through this whole thing? Well, you, you, you are witness to a conversation between Liliana and Charles very quickly uh, at the beginning of the premiere. So um, there are definitely repercussions of that for, with their relationship as well. Um, it, funny, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, it was reported over the summer that Dominic Reigns is leaving the show. Do we get an update, I guess, on what happens to Crockett or any chance he may come back to wrap that story up? Or do we find out what happens to Crockett? We do find out what ha- where Crockett has gone. Yes. We do not see Dominic uh, okay. in, you know, in the beginning of season 10. Um, and the reason I decided to do it that way is because I, I just felt that uh, the previous showrunners, Andy and Diane, had done a beautiful job of already explaining, you know, that he had some grieving that he's never allowed himself to do for his his daughter who died, you know, several years ago. And that was done in this beautiful way where if Dominic had come back that, you know, his story could have just continued. But it, it, 
since it, it ended up that he didn't come back, that I think it makes total sense where he went. So we explained where he went, but it's in dialogue. And I don't want to mislead anybody to expect that Dominic will be in the premiere. Um, the other kind of one of the other big things from the finale was um, Sean and Dean's fight, um, you know, about Dean or Sean really kind of letting his feelings out about Dean's absence in his life, you know, all those years ago. Are we going to see them work on their reconciliation in the premiere and I guess in the episodes to come? Um, I, lo I love that question because most people don't ask that question. I think you're the second person that has asked about Sean and Archer's relationship. Um, it's... Uh, the answer is yes, there will be some uh, further dealing uh, with that, but uh, not in the premiere. Okay. Um, the other thing we saw in the finale was Sharon made the difficult decision, you know, in regards to Bert's health. And, you know, she finally let Dr. Washington be there for her. I guess, what can we expect from that relationship between Wash Dr. Washington and Sharon this season? Well, you can expect a lot. Uh, in, in in that department between uh, Goodwin and and Dennis, um, we're going to see uh, some different colors to that relationship. Um, we're going to get some surprises in that relationship, um, and um, you're the only person I've teased this with. But we will see um, Doctor Washington's daughter at some point, and Ooh. that's going to, you know, not necessarily go well. So, um, but that's a little deeper uh, into the season yeah. that's in the first few episodes. Gotcha. Um, we also are getting two new characters this year, um, Dr. Caitlin Lennox and John Frost, played by Sarah Ramos and Darren Barnett. What can you tease about those characters? Uh, Lennox is uh, not a cuddly personality. Um, she uh, is brought in by Goodwin to uh, help in the ED. Mm -hmm. because there's a nearby hospital closing down and the overflow from that hospital will be absorbed by Gaffney. Um, and uh, Lennox was brought in because she is really into efficiency. Uh -huh. She is not like cold hearted and doesn't care about patients, um, but she is aware of the numbers and she believes firmly that if you stop and are super sweet to every patient and get to know them, you're actually denying care to the patients that are waiting. Mm -hmm. And so the best thing you can do for patients is to move them through as quickly as possible, not in a callous way, but right. You know. And that, that attitude does not go over well with a lot of the other people in the ED. And there's a lot of clashing, um, you know, especially and specifically with Archer, mm -hmm. who not super excited about uh, Lennox's arrival. And one of the main reasons that I created the character is I wanted someone to uh, make Archer super irritated and grouchy, right. sarcastic, because I just eat that up when he's like that. And um, so, you know, that 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 was the idea between her character. She uh, is a bit of a mystery to everybody, but as the season progresses, you will get little windows into why she's the way she is and what her background is. Um, one of the fun things about her and Archer is that they are they're they are both former military and you would think that would be something that would bond them, but the, it actually like irritates them both that the other was in the military because like, mm -hmm. like they took you. So, you know. Like and then that. you also have Dr. John Frost too. Yes. What about his character? Dr. Uh, John Frost is a, a pediatrician um, that we uh, meet in the first episode. Like I said, we meet both Lennox and, and Frost in the season premiere. Um, he comes in with a uh, young girl uh, that possibly has a neurological condition and needs to get an MRI. He, uh, Frost works at the hospital that is about to close and they've already sold their MRIs and this is a time sensitive issue. So he, you know, tries to charm his way uh, into getting Maggie to help facilitate this test. And, you know, Maggie helps, but she is uh, put off a little bit by his charm assault, as, as, as I don't remember if that was dialogue or in the description, but he, 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 he does a charm assault and she calls him on it. And it's just a lot of fun. I love watching Darren Barnett and uh, Marley and Barrett, like, go at each other. It was fun. Yeah. 
it was fun. Awesome. He's I, I I haven't explained him completely well, but like what what I would say about him is he relates really well with children. He's able to get down on their level, whether they're young children or teenagers, and you know he knows how to talk to them he remembers what it's like to be that age mm -hmm. and he's very protective of children um and he feels very strongly um as an operating principle that he that you should tell children even young children uh what's wrong with their body if there's a medical issue and that they mm -hmm. should be involved in the conversations about how to treat that and parents don't always agree with that they want to protect right from the truth and if there's something scary happening they don't they don't want that so in episode two uh dr frost you know cl clashes with some parents over over that very issue and what we find is that he uh frost cut off his parents uh at some point because he felt they did not protect him as a child and so he put himself through med school and decided to pursue uh pediatrics that's awesome. Well, Alan, that's all the questions I have. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with me. I really appreciate it.